Hey guys, welcome back to Dave's Small Engines. I'm sure a lot of you saw the last video where I received the, uh, the damaged parts that were supposed to be new. Well, I've got those boxed up. I'm sending them back to the seller on eBay for a full refund. And now the search continues for a source for new parts. The problem I'm having is I have looked far and wide all across the internet for the specific part number for the piston and cylinder for the slant fin version of this 261, that's the newer M-Tronic version. And what I'm finding is that pistons and cylinders from still OEM are not available. I think that's because of COVID. That's what I'm hearing. The factory isn't pumping out the same kind of spare parts, OEM parts to, to fix their saws. Um, instead, they're focusing on those parts being used on new equipment. And from also what I've heard, uh, there's a backlog on getting anything new from still. The 500i, which is a saw that I'm also interested in buying, um, apparently you can't get it anywhere right now. So I figure in the meantime, I'll pull apart the 261C. You guys know it has the slightly scored piston and cylinder. I'm gonna do a compression check first because I'm curious to know. If you guys remember the video that we did over on Donnie Boy 73s channel, he told me it didn't run for the purpose of my own learning and diagnostics as his apprentice. Um, I'm pretty sure it does run, but he didn't want me to run it and cause more damage should this be able to be cleaned up and fixed even on a temporary basis. So given the fact that those parts are months, months maybe, hopefully not, a year out, um, maybe we can pull it apart, clean it up, or at least see how much damage is done and plan a course of action for when those parts are available. All right, let's get started. Now I have a 441C, which is an M-Tronic saw as well. So I think what I've heard is that they're similar. Now these are kind of cool, these clips. They're just a half turn with a flat head. And the cover pops off, wow. Look at that, guys. Doesn't get much more new than that, does it? I actually haven't had the cover off the saw yet, so I'm pretty happy with what I'm seeing here. I mean, other than the fact that this is a scored piston and cylinder. And wow, okay, this looks a lot more in depth than the 026 MX260 that I'm used to working on. All right, so the first thing I'm gonna do to at least free up some space here is take the muffler off right here. It's still loose, obviously, because we use that during our diagnostics. Here, so you gotta pop these two protective clips off. And then in the muffler, those two holes you saw are two T27 bolts. Again, it's not tight because we had the muffler off. So there's a third one down here, the fourth. So two here, two here, muffler comes off. That's what those bottom ones look like. Then the other two are the same. Let's have another look at this. We'll zoom in there so you guys can see. Yeah. There's the straight gassed piston and cylinder. So for the purposes of learning and for argument's sake, I want to do a compression test on this saw. So I'm going to remove the spark plug boot. And I think this slides out if I undo these two T27s here. Again, I've never had one of these apart before, so this is a, a learning curve for me as well. Okay, so this shroud right here comes off. I have great access here. Maybe even better than the 026 and the 260. I'm gonna pull the spark plug out. Yeah, 
There's that lean plug. It's not awful though. And I'm gonna put the, oh yeah, guys, look at that. Look at how OEM and mint that is. Hardly used. What a shame. But we'll get it back going, won't we? Trusty compression tester, thread it in. Now, from what I've learned from Don, Donnie Boy 73, small engines usually don't even decide to run below 90 PSI. Let's do a compression test on this and see what happens. Okay, so I'm just gonna leave the ignition off, decompression valve out, because we want to measure the real compression here, not the uh, lowered compression by utilizing the valve for starting. Let's see what happens. Ten pulls. Wow, guys, what is that? 165 psi. So with a number like 165 psi, I know that this saw will run. So I know the information Don gave me for my diagnostic was to make sure that I didn't do any further damage. At 165 psi, the saw will run, but given that level of scoring, not for long. The other part to that is it may have 165 psi when it's cold, but as things expand when it heats up, that number probably drops and probably is the reason why this saw wasn't operating properly once it was at temperature. Okay, so now I'm gonna pop the air filter off, counterclockwise turn, comes right off. Next thing I'm gonna do is buy us some room and remove the handlebar. So I'm gonna use the T27 here for the anti-vibration spring. Two on the side. Coarse thread, probably because they're going into plastic. And again, keep all of your bolts together with like parts. I find it helps. And then the two on the bottom. Lots of awesome anti-vibration stuff on this saw, so it moves around a little bit. And then, oh, okay, there's going to be another one here on the side, right where the chain catch is. Now this one's a this one's a flathead or pan head, you could say, with the chain catch. This one's damaged, so I might replace that anyhow. Okay, so if we unscrew this spring, then we can pop this out. Bar comes off, anti-vibration awesomeness here, and then spring just kind of threads on just like that when we put it back on. Okay, so the next step is two eight mils in here. This piece comes off. And now, if we undo these two anti-vibration points here, this whole piece should lift off. But we do have a connector to worry about here for that awesome M-Tronic carburetor. So we'll undo that. We use a flathead here to remove the two anti-vibration rubber mounts. Choke linkage. That comes off. And of course, the ground linkage, but we might be able to work around it if we just leave it like this. What I don't like to do is disassemble more than I need to. So the carburetor comes off. Sorry, we're still hooked into that choke linkage. Just like that, there's the M-Tronic carburetor. Pretty neat, guys. This is the future. Pretty cool. 
All right, so now that we're free and clear of everything cylinder related, I think it's just gonna be these four T27s and then the cylinder should come off. I think the only thing that's holding this on now is the fuel line. So we should be able to pop that off. Okay. And now this should lift off. There we have it. Of course, the four bolts, we're going to want to take those out. Very curious to see the damage here. Okay. There's the scoring. Yikes. Not great all the way around. I can feel it with my fingers. I could probably sand it out. Maybe I will, or maybe I'll see if Donnie Boy 73 is a replacement for me. Okay, so as you guys can see, this piston is toast. That's the intake side. Usually it's not as bad, but check this out. Yikes. You feel that with your finger? This piston is absolutely toast. But look at this, look inside. Looks like it's brand new, because it is. One tank of bad gas, that's all it takes. Okay guys, now we know what the damage is like on this straight gassed MS261C. Yes, it's a shame, it's not the end of the world. I'm gonna use this saw as my overall go-to saw, so I wanna do it properly. Let me know what you think in the comments. I think this piston, for sure, is too far gone. I can probably clean that cylinder up and throw a Meteor piston or an OEM piston in here if I can even find one. I still think the best course of action is to get a brand new cylinder and a brand new piston. So this saw has many, many years to come for me of use. Thanks for watching guys. Now we know. Let me know what you think and I'll catch you later. Cheers.